Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is part number three of lecture number 15. In the series of lecture number 15, we have been studying a research paper. Let me show you the research paper. This is the research paper we have been studying. The title of the research paper is New Discretization of Caputo Fabrizio Derivative. In this research paper, authors have presented some numerical techniques to the uh, for the approximation of the Caputo Fabrizio derivative while they have used the Lagrange interpolation method. So in first part of lecture number 15, we had derived L1 formula along with its MATLAB code. And in second part of lecture number 15, we had derived L12 formula along with its code. And this L12 formula was derived via backward approximation. So L1 formula had a quadratic rate of convergence while L12 formula backward approximation was having a cubic rate of convergence. We verified these rates of convergence with our MATLAB code and also presented some simulations which were being matched with the simulations that are presented in this research paper. In today's lecture, we will learn how L12 formula has to be derived with forward approximation and also we will learn how to design a MATLAB code for that. So first let me show you that what is the L12 formula that has been derived in this research paper. So that L12 formula via forward approximation is given by the authors in this subsection 2.2. Point two. So, the method is now highlighted. So, this is our uh, today's goal. We have to drive this scheme and then we have to also design its MATLAB code. Do remember that this scheme is also having a cubic rate of convergence like L12 formula with backward approximation that we did in the second part of lecture number 15. I will provide the links for the first and second part of lecture number 15 in the description box. So let's move to the presentation mode to understand how this forward approximation has been derived and then we will have uh, a look at the MATLAB code as well. Okay, so let's start our discussion of this third part. In equation number one, uh, you have the definition for the Caputo Fabrizio derivative. Let's replace x by xk in this equation, and then we will have the equation number two. It has the integration interval from 0 to xk. I'm going to break this integration interval into several sub intervals in the next slide. We have the first integral from x0 to x1 and then you can keep doing so until the last one. Now write down equation number 3 in the compact form while using this summation notation where j starts from 2 and ends at k plus 1. So compact form of equation number 4 has been written. Compact form in equation number 4 has been written. Now you can also notice in equation number 4 that we have a term first order derivative inside the integral. So we will use the quadratic Lagrange interpolation polynomial that passes through the three points on the screen you can see. So if you replace the first order derivative by this quadratic Lagrange interpolation <coughs> polynomial that is passing through the three points, then you will be having the, uh, okay, before, in the next slide, I will show you if we replace, then what would happen. But uh, this is the quadratic Lagrange interpolation. Now, before replacing, look at the denominators of this uh, equation. These denom denominators can be simplified. 
with the help of these relations which we know from our previous knowledge of classical numerical analysis so xj can be replaced by j times h and then you can also look at the other two equations so use this information uh, and substitute these terms into this quadratic lagrange interpolation polynomial if we do so we will have this equation which is highlighted with the yellow color after that we are ready to differentiate this equation and if we do so we will have this red color expression now i have collected the terms uh, all the terms which are with x and then other terms as well and then the simplified form is equation number 5 wherein i have once again used the information that xj is equal to jh and so on so forth so equation number 5 is a simplified version for this red color equation after that we are ready to substitute this equation 5 into equation number 4 right in the place of first order derivative so you can look at this i have now replaced it and now in the next equation i will put the right hand side of this equation number 5 into equation number 4 so if we do so we will have this equation number 6 in equation number 6 you can notice we have an exponential function involving this variable s so i can give this exponential function with both of these terms okay and then you will have equation number 7 now in equation number 7 these exponential terms have the variable s and we have another variable s over here also okay note down i am going to highlight it we have over here as well so let's separate them because we have to integrate these terms so i have separated in equation number 8 and also highlighted with the yellow color so that we can clearly understand that which terms are going to be integrated so we have final equation number 8 now and now it is easy to integrate so let's integrate the first term involving this exponential function has been integrated and i have also used the fundamental theorem of calculus i mean i have substituted the upper and the lower limit of integration and you can see that the second term has also been integrated and the fundamental theorem of calculus is now used in equation number 10 so you can see we have some lengthy expression after we put uh, upper limit and lower limit of integration so we will have this equation number 10 now in equation 10 in equation in equation 10 you can see that there is a common constant minus lambda i can take it outside so here you can see that i have taken the minus lambda outside which was a constant over here so we will have equation number 11 after that lambda was equal to minus alpha upon 1 minus alpha so we have the simplified form over here and i am left with alpha in the denominator where is rest of the terms are same so we have equation number 12 now in equation number 12 you can see it is quite lengthy and uh, it's very difficult to understand and also difficult to code so what i have done i have uh, chosen here some shortcut symbols so delta has been used and wherever j minus 1 appears it has been given a name delta j minus 1 and if there is j minus 2 it has been given a name delta j minus 2 so equation number 12 becomes Uh, if i substitute these greek letters then equation number 12 becomes equation number 13 where is rest of the terms are same now in the next slide you will see that m of alpha is equal to 1 which is a normalization factor and its value 1 has been used in several research papers including the one we have been studying in the series of lecture number 15 so finally we have got our l12 method forward approximation for the caputo fabrizio derivative and the scheme is now on the screen so this is the scheme which has been derived in the research paper i would suggest that you should compare the terms with the terms given in the research paper you will find no difference so this is how we have derived this l12 method forward approximation and you had noticed in the research paper it was directly given with no simplification so it was very complicated to understand that how the authors have actually derived this 
uh, L1 to method forward approximation. So if we do it uh, step by step, then it is actually not difficult. And we have got our uh, method. So now let's go to the MATLAB code to verify that uh, it has a cubic rate of conversions and how it actually uh, behaves when we when we apply it on on the on some functions. Okay, so I'm going to move to the MATLAB code. So here we go. We have the same file once again. Uh, line number eleven, some necessary commands, and then on line number eighteen, we have chosen a step size. Line number 22, we have the initial value for our x variable. On line number 25, we have the final value 2, which has also been taken in the research paper S2. And then on line number 28, we have the interval uh, 0 to 2 with the step size h. Number of steps denoted by k. Fractional order 0 0.1. Normalization factor 1. This constant lambda minus alpha upon 1 minus alpha. We have cosine 4x, so I have written here w and I have assigned 4 to w. We have this function which has to be differentiated. And now we have our main algorithm. On line number 56, the index starts from 2 and goes to k plus 1. And this is some same we have in the scheme. Note down over here in the summation, j starts from 2 and ends at k plus 1. So this is what I have done in the code as well. Okay, and now I want you to focus on these lines starting from 61 till 71. So basically 71 is the main scheme that you saw on the screen on the presentation. I have broken the terms into several terms. So let me explain what I have done. So on the presentation on this slide, you can see we have some terms with a green color. I have taken these terms and I have assigned a name, capital C, to these green color terms. After that, in the white color term, you can see we have this delta with subscript j minus 1. I have taken this term and I have assigned the name ej. Similarly, I have uh, done the similar kind of uh, thing to rest of the terms as well. And then finally, I have substituted the terms in the final scheme so that was an easier way to avoid any error regarding the brackets so initially when i was typing uh, it was giving me some error related to the brackets i forget i was forgetting some brackets so i think this one this method is an easier method break the terms into several terms and then combine them in the final scheme we can avoid the errors in this way okay so the approximation has been completed now i have to of course uh, compare the appro approximated result with the exact one so i have introduced a symbol here x and then what you see on the screen line number 82 is the definition for the caputo fabrizio i have used the same definition i would suggest that you should keep the definition in front of you and this line number 82 also in front of you and compare what has been done you will find no difference fine so this is the same definition and it will give you the exact caputo fabrizio derivative for the function f that was cosine 4 x from 0 to 2 fine and after that you can look at the line number 87. I have converted this exact answer in the double precision. And then absolute errors are computed. The absolute error has been computed at the final mesh point. That is 2 here. Don't forget it. So we have absolute error, exact minus approximate answer. After that, I have tried to display, uh, tried to display some results. So the final line of the code is line number 80 line number 104 all the results are combined in the first column you will see how many steps are taken in the second step size exact answer approximate answer and then we will see at that absolute error that is computed at the final mesh point let's run this code now 
and do remember that we have a strip size 0 0.1 okay so run the code and look at the output or the command window and now look at the results we have 20 steps here with this tip size 0.1 exact answer approximate answer and here we have the absolute error at the final mesh point and this is of magnitude 10 to the power minus 5. Let me tell you that in the research paper authors have not actually presented any simulation related to this uh, L12 method that is with the forward approximation so I cannot compare my results as I was doing in, uh, in my previous two lectures of um, lecture number 15. So what I will do here in order to confirm, I will decrease this step size by one order of magnitude and if this absolute error is decreasing by three orders of magnitude, then it will be confirmed that the method has a cubic rate of convergence. So let's do it now. Go to the code again and decrease the step size to 0 0.01. Run the code again, go to the command window and here we go. The error was 10 to the power minus 5 and now it is 10 to the power minus 8. So a decrease of 3 orders of magnitude has been observed. Let's confirm it once again by decreasing the step size to 0 0.001. Run the code again and now what do you expect? Yes, you are right. We should expect the error to have a magnitude of 10 to the power minus 11. Let's go to the command window and here we go. We have absolute error 7.900710 to the power minus 11, a decrease of three orders of magnitude. So it has been confirmed that the method L12 method forward approximation is having a cubic rate of convergence as uh, in the case of L12 method backward approximation we did in the second part of lecture number 15. Fine, I hope you understood the derivation as well as the MATLAB code for this method. In the research paper, new discretization of Caputo Fabrizio derivative, let me tell you in the fourth part of lecture number 15, I will be once again driving another method L12 central approximation and that is having the fourth order of accuracy. So that would be the fourth part of lecture number 15 and after that we will complete this research paper with the code and with the derivation of the, um, with the actually code I think there is um, no any other method, yes, only the fifth part would contain the discussion of the MATLAB code regarding linear and non-linear subdiffusion equation. These are the partial differential equations and that have been actually simulated with the help of all the numerical schemes that the authors have presented to approximate the Caputo Fabrizio derivative. So that discussion will be carried out in the last part of lecture number 15. I hope you have understood the lecture and enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or any kind of query, so please you can write that in the comment box. Thank you so much for watching the lecture.